So today we'll be speaking with Nicholas Anderson, who is the author of the book, Knock, Non-Official Cover, British Secret Operations. And uh, we'll be speaking about Gaddafi's tunnels in Libya. So, uh, Nicholas, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started with the questions? Uh, yes, I'm a 19-year career secret intelligence officer from the UK. Um, an NOC is really somebody who is a wild card type of guy that will go to and take a good look at something that we don't know the answer to that the satellite could not tell us. And that was basically my job in the early days until I developed into other areas. And one of my first missions when I was a much younger man was to Libya in the mid 70s to go and take a look at a what they said, our side said, was in a chemical production plant in Tahuna, about 30, 40 miles southeast of Tripoli, the capital of Libya. I did indeed take a look at it. Uh, I wrote about it in a chapter in my book that you mentioned. And I would not know in those days and, and still to this day if whether I was looking at a nuclear plant, a chemical production plant, a water irrigation storage system, I wouldn't know. So what I did was I took photographs and I took samples of the water and the soil from different parts and I was in and out in a day. Uh, I also accidentally I came across that uh, Libya was furnishing the Irish Republican Army with its weapons, but that's a whole other story. But officially, the tunnels that Gaddafi called the Great Man-Made River officially started in 1984, 1984. But I discovered that this was actually in place 10 years before that. And they went on from that point in Tahuna to make 2,000 miles of tunnels 6,000 feet down on average. Do you know that that, according to Americans, would be about the size, 2,000 miles, square miles, is about the size of the state of Missouri? And in a straight line, it would be from the New York City to the Mexican border. So quite a lot of tunnels they crammed in into about 68,000 square miles the size of Missouri. Anyway, uh, as we all know, Gaddafi uh, was a rather paranoid man. It's a long history between what he did in Libya and what the Americans were doing backward and forward. Uh, 1986, he was bombed by the American Air Force, the U.S. Air Force, and he became paranoid and started to make the tunnel even more with bunkers. Now, he uh, was finally captured, but there's all sorts of spin-offs there that came in uh, 1988. Pan Am 103 came down in Lockerbie, Scotland. Um, I can say that to this day, a lot of the British justice system do not believe that Al Magrani, I think they pronounced it, was guilty of what he did in bombing that plane, and they let him go. And I believe he's still alive at this point, but he's dying. Um, I was asked to get involved again in Libya only recently while they were looking for Gaddafi because they couldn't find the younger... SIS officers could not find the entrance to the tunnels near Tripoli, and I actually directed them to it over the phone. Um, my history, I may add, is the E Squadron, which was made up, up of uh, SIS and SBS, which is similar to your um, US Navy SEALs. 
the E Squadron was created only in 2006, and they were the ones in Libya looking for Gaddafi and helped the rebels find him. And I must say that five years before that, I helped in the development of the beginning of E Squadron. So I'm um, maybe retired, but I'm still asked a uh, question by law. I think that's about it. Um, it cost Gaddafi $30 billion to make this thing, of which he had billions abroad, and of which, of course, the people were uh, not benefiting from the money that was going on. And I'm not too certain they ever will be, because now it'll be a new regime that comes in. So it's a, a merry-go-round. Right. Or merry-go-round, I should say. Right. Back to you. Okay, I was going to ask, as far as these tunnels go, I mean, lots of countries have, you know, tunnels, but, like, what do you think that, um, I mean, obviously we don't know for sure what those tunnels were being used for originally other than to keep whatever it is that they were doing uh, hidden uh, from others, and that's, you know, probably the main purpose of it being a, a tunnel rather than a facility that's above ground that could be bombed or something like that. Um, but, you know, do you do you speculate that there's any uh, use for them uh, today, considering that that Oh, absolutely. We had all of the prisons down there. Any prisoner that they ever had was put down there. There were people living in the Matamata Mountain between Libya and Tunisia on its west coast that lived in the caves, and they looked at how they were living and decided to create what you saw in the mountain underground, and quite a, quite a number of people actually lived in those tunnels. It, it, it is free air conditioning down there, you know, it gets quite cool. <laughs> uh, but it was large enough to, uh, in area, to have a truck in there or an armored vehicle, limos. He had his stockpile of uh, fuel, food, and medicine down there, enough for four million people a year at all times. So... I'm certain they'll come up with more reasons what uh, they're going to do with it, but they do have the sewer pipes and the water pipes running along the side of all of these tunnels anyway, because further south of Libya, you've got the um, natural underwater basin, like a large oasis, and it's pumping the water from there to the cities. Hmm. So they're quite... Uh, I'm not kind of to them. I think they're quite clever with what they do with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, do you think that um, most people in Libya know about these tunnels, or do you think that it's just something that um, that they they probably hear about a lot, or, or um, but they don't really know because they've never the, li the Libyan people. Yes. Oh, well, the Libyan people. Are, I'm pretty certain they all know it exists, but where it is might be another story about how to get in. But they all know that their water is coming from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, do you think that with, I, uh, the new uh, regime that things will change? Do you think that people will uh, know more about this sort of thing now that uh, Gaddafi is gone? Oh, I think that all the governments lie in every part of the world, so they'll come up with some new ways of keeping information away from the people, unfortunately. And I don't think anybody really wants to hear that Gaddafi was much like Saddam and Tito in Yugoslavia. They were the glue that held all the warring factions together. And now that they've gone, it blew up everything. So I expect to see civil war in Libya, much like going on in Egypt, continue for three to five more years. This is this is history repeating itself. Right, right. Is there uh, anything that we haven't uh, covered uh, so far that you would like to uh, just mention in, in closing about uh, these tunnels? I mean, we'll be speaking about other topics. But um, uh, that would be for future interviews. But uh, anything about this topic that we haven't covered? 
Um, well, only I can say that uh, they weren't all the same size. Uh, in some cases it was a golf buggy, small tunnels. Uh, other ones were larger tunnels. And I do hope that they use what's already there for something positive in the future for them. Right. Uh, one of the few countries that has got such a unique system, so I hope they use it for something rather than blow it all up. Right. Now, if someone wanted to read more about yourself and, and uh, about your chapter in the book about this, they would go to nicholasanderson.info and uh, get uh, an opportunity to uh, purchase your book and to also uh, look for more information about yourself. Is that correct? That's absolutely right, yes. Okay. Well, we'll be speaking again, and uh, so we'll be putting these uh, videos up so that people can uh, subscribe to future uh, videos. So we invite uh, everybody to look out for those uh, next interviews that uh, we do. And um, until then, uh, tune in to uh, nicholasanderson.info for more information. Thank you.